Hi, everybody. Really good to be here today. Thank you for having me. My name is Anargia. I am an investor at a firm called Maveron, and we do consumer-only investing, so really hyper-focused on finding and investing in breakout consumer tech brands. I'm really excited to be here with you today, so thank you so much for having me. And I'm here to talk a little bit about how to pitch a VC. I spend most of my day and my week listening to pitches. So I'm excited to kind of share what I hear, some tips and tricks of the trade, and hopefully bust some myths for you. Uh, but first, to get a sense of who's in the room, how many of you have pitched a VC, are currently pitching, or are going to pitch? Show of hands. Awesome. Round of applause for all of those people. Yeah. It is not easy to do. Pitching is tough. Fundraising is exhausting, it's lengthy, it's frustrating, it's often opaque, and not a lot of clarity around what works and what doesn't work. Fun fact, I have sat on the other side of the table and participated in fundraising myself. I've pitched for small startups. My sister and I even tried to do a t-shirt company, which didn't work, but we did pitch VCs. So I hope that from both sides of the table, I can share with you some of the parts of the trade that will make it easier, that will allow you to iterate on your pitch, and hopefully have a more uh, successful pitching and fundraising process. Now, the first thing you need to do in order to do the pitch is get the meeting. Try to go next slide. Great. Perfect. So before you pitch, you want to get the meeting. And how do you get the meeting? There are a lot of ways to get the attention of VCs. One such way is attending events and conferences such as this, where you have the ability to network with VCs and meet them in person and hopefully develop a relationship that then leads to a pitch meeting. Another, and I would say perhaps the most common way, is an initial introductory email. Now, for that email, I always recommend a warm email. Find someone in your network, whether that is through LinkedIn, through alumni associations, through your friends. Find someone who can write an introduction to you and introduce you to that VC. Because every morning, VCs such as myself and others are waking up with so many emails. Emails start stacking up. And if you're coming from a trusted source, someone I know and trust, you're more likely to get that response faster. You're less likely to be piled into the rest of the emails. Now, think of that warm introduction almost like a college letter of recommendation. You don't want someone who says, hey, I know this person. Will you talk to them? You do want someone who says, hey, this person is one of the best operators I have seen. They are leaving their company to start a new company. You must speak with them. That's what you want. So coach the person who's writing the warm introduction if you need to. Make sure that initial connection is really great. After that, when you send the email, most people nowadays are reading email on their phone. So long paragraphs are terrible on a laptop. They are even worse on the phone. Keep that email five sentences or less. Get straight to the point. Who are you? What are you building? Boom, boom, boom. Keep that really short. And include any links for highlights, such as newspaper articles, blogs, podcasts, videos, anything that really shows who you are and what you're building. That email will be short, the investor will see it, and hopefully you develop that initial relationship and get to the next stage. Also, just kind of obvious things, but you'd be surprised how often they happen. Avoid typos, avoid misspellings. I'm often referred to as dear sir. Find out what you should write, spell the name right. Just making sure those things are really crisp and on point really helps with those initial interactions. Now, a question I get often, should I include a deck in that first email? People will tell you different answers. Different VCs, different investors have different preferences. I say don't. In that very first email, don't include the deck. Because what you run the risk of happening is the VC opens it, they flip through the deck, and they develop their own preconceived notions or sense for your business. And you may just get passed on by. Control your narrative. Control your story. Send that initial email. If they then request a deck, by all means, do send it. But I prefer when the founder is able to be in the room, have that deck, and control the whole story themselves, start to finish. Now, let's say you got that meeting. Awesome. What happens next? 
You are a storyteller. You have built this company from start to finish. It is your baby and it is your story to tell. Guide the investor through that story. Whether it is a formal pitch where you're in a boardroom and you have a deck, or if you're just in a coffee shop chit-chatting, both instances you should be guiding them through a story. You should be hand-holding them through you, your business, why you're building it. Because if you pull them in, engage them, and make it more conversational, you're more likely to really attract them and hook them in. Again, remember, an investor is probably doing three, five, eight meetings a day. How do you stand out? How do you connect with them? Which leads to my second point. Make sure that the pitch is tailored to the investor and to the firm. Tons of information available online. So for example, if you were coming to Mavron, you would look online and you would see that we are 100% focused on consumer tech brands. Branding, brand building, that emotional connection with the customer is super important for us. So when founders come in, we want them to talk about that. How are they going to build a brand? Who on their team is the right person to build the brand? How much does this brand building exercise cost? Et cetera, et cetera. So by tailoring and customizing it, you're ensuring that you're getting the biggest bang for your buck in that meeting, you're pulling the investor in, and you know that you're talking about things that they really care about. You can find these things out online. I recommend trying to talk to other founders that they've invested in. Those founders can tell you, well, this firm, you should talk about brand. This firm, you should focus more on X, Y, Z, whatever it may be. But that preparation and that foundational work in advance will certainly go a long way during the pitch. Other things to understand, what stage does this firm invest in? What do their capital requirements in terms of a return or their ability to provide follow-ons look like? Not all of that information may be available online, but you can go online and see on Crunchbase, for example, okay, Mavron made a Series A investment in this company. Oh, I'm looking, it looks like most of their investments are Series A. Their core investment must be a Series A. So doing that additional detailed information and searching can help with the initial relationship building. Maybe you're not a Series A company, but you're earlier. Well, good, good time to build a relationship and start getting to know the firm and the investors. Now, what happens next? Let's get into some of the tactical things, because an important thing to remember is you're in the pitch. You're not just asking for money. There is a lot of commodity, commoditized capital out there. Lots of different investors can write a check. Why are you going after that particular firm, that particular investor? This ties back into customizing the pitch. But remember that when you're in that meeting, it is OK to ask questions. Diligence should be a two-way street. They're going to ask you tough questions. Ask tough questions back. Find out what kind of investor this person is. You want to remember that this investment is a long-term relationship. You're going to be together five, eight, ten, however long it takes to build a big business. And you want to make sure that you have the right people on board. When I was pitching, I didn't really know that it was OK to diligence the investor in the meeting or afterwards. Totally OK. Ask about a hard situation they had on a board. How did they react? The good and the bad is super important. You can also ask things like, you talk about your network being helpful. Can you talk about three or four people in your network that could directly help my business? What experience do you have in investing in consumer technology? What have you learned from your investment in eBay? And how does that apply to what I'm doing now? All of these things are totally up for grabs. And I highly recommend that founders ask them, not only for your own benefit in the meeting, but it also shows that you're learning and growing during the meeting and how you will react later on through that relationship. Now to get to some tactical things. In the pitch, what are things you should talk about? Number one thing that I want to know is who are you? What are you building? And why are you the right person to build it? People talk about product market fit. We talk about that. We also talk about product founder fit. Who are you and what product are you building and why are you that right person to build it? You'll then go through the usual things that I've listed up there, the problem, the solution, how big it can be, what the customer looks like, those types of things. Some of the red flags that I encourage you to not avoid to really talk about, the competitive landscape. What do the competitors look like, big and small? Maybe it's a bunch of other small startups. Maybe it's some big companies like Google and Facebook and Amazon. Either way, what's your answer for how you navigate that space? Those are really important things to address. 
Another thing that we look for really is a deep understanding of the customer. Who is that customer? And I've given this talk before and I had a great question from the audience, which was, what if the investor is not the target demographic? That is okay. I think unfortunately, oftentimes, many times, founders, especially women founders, especially founders of color, may run into the problem where what they're building doesn't resonate with the investor. We need to be really open about that, honest about that, and self-aware about that. And hopefully I try to do my best, and I know my colleagues do as well. But the more we have that conversation, I think the more it comes to the forefront. Say, address the elephant in the room. Say, look, you are not the target customer. You shouldn't just go home and ask your daughter if she would use it, and just because she doesn't think it's a bad business. What we do to avoid that is we really do customer research. You, can, you as the founder can give the investor five, 10 different customer names and say, hey, talk to these people. They're using it. They love it. You can look on social media. You can look at reviews, whatever it may be. And I think if you're proactive about it, it's going to be easier for the investor to really get engaged, understand, and click with what you're building. Some other things to think about. I often ask questions and there's a situation where the founder jumps around it and doesn't answer it directly. That's really noticeable. It's totally okay to say, I don't know. I think my co-founder knows better or someone on my team knows better. I will follow up shortly. That's perfectly okay. I would, I would avoid jumping around it and pretending like you answered it in some kind of way, but, but not entirely. Another good thing to ask tactically in that meeting is it's totally okay to say how much you're raising, what the amount remaining is, that's perfectly fine. And it's also okay to talk about financials and dig in should the investor want to. Be prepared to answer every single numbers-based question. We really want founders to have a crispness. If you throw a number up on a slide and say this was our revenue last month, be able to talk to why it was higher or why it was lower. If an investor asks what was your customer acquisition cost during the holidays, during the sales seasons, really know these numbers inside and out and be prepared perhaps with an extra document on the side to be able to answer them. Now to bust a couple myths that I thought was the case when I was fundraising and, and have been busted now that I'm on the investment side. I thought that if the numbers made sense, the investor would for sure invest. Not true. Investors are people, and for a variety of reasons, they may not invest. They may not feel a personal connection with what you're building. They may not feel a personal connection with you. They may not be inspired by what you're creating. So remember that investors are people. Again, it ties back to one of my earlier points, pull them in and engage them to the best of your ability. But just because the numbers make sense, it doesn't mean you're going to get a check. Another thing I thought, investors are experts. They know it all. Also not true. You are the expert in what you're building. You spend day in and day out in it. You know everything about it. If there are acronyms that you're using, if you're talking about organizations that are relevant to your business, shed some light on what they are, what they mean. Again, another part of engaging in that conversation. Sometimes a founder will come pitch and use a bunch of acronyms and, and I'm lost. I don't, know, I don't know what they mean. I try to be intelligent about the topic and prepare, but there's so many things. Again, I've gone through three, five, eight meetings that day. So remember to pull them in and share that information, share your expertise and bring them into your world. Another thing to really think about is how are you as a founder in that actual pitch meeting? I got a really good piece of advice early on, which was, don't convince me to invest. Convince me that your business or product or service is amazing. And there's a subtle difference between those two things. And I think it certainly takes practice. I thought you could walk into a pitch meeting. You know everything. You're just going to go share it. No, practice, practice, practice. Sh get your friends. Get your friends who are investors. Walk them through the pitch. Ask them, am I continuously asking you to invest or trying to force it on you? Or am I really convincing you that I'm building something amazing and I am the right person to build it? That practice will go a long way and it will certainly show when you are in that pitch meeting. Finally, what you all do is incredibly admirable. We are in business because of you. It is really hard to get in front of an investor or a group of investors and share in 20, 30, 45 minutes this huge backlog of things that you've done. And I really admire the perseverance, the tenacity, the determination founders have day in and day out to do it. You're going to get a lot of no's. 
I've spoken with founders who've had 10, 30, 60 no's before they've gotten a yes, and they still keep pushing. And so for you all who are doing that every day, day in and day out, I thank you humbly and I'm honored to be in business to work with people like you. Thank you.